<clears throat> All right. Good evening, Corona Days Professional Development Group. It's me, Danette Edwards, and this evening I am here with <laughs> this evening I am here with uh, Lisa Fenton, and uh, Lisa is going to talk to us this evening about empowering yourself in your personal and professional life. I, uh, I'm so sorry, guys. You guys know how I do it. Uh, let me tell you a little about um, Lisa. Let me tell you about the presentation. So tonight, Lisa's going to talk to us about how uh, she's going to help you feel more com comfortable in making, decision, making a decision, bringing a new perspective to challenges, how you can get creative and effective solutions or a combination of solutions. And uh, she's going to help you secure a positive result. A little about Lisa. Lisa Fenton is a certified supply chain management professional, supply chain manager, and an advocate of championing those who have had gaps in employment back to work with a focus on negotiating beyond salary. She created a workbook, 12 Steps to Return to Work to help others jumpstart their journey and customize their path back to work to the workforce with the bonus section. Seven Steps to Negotiating a Job Offer. And uh, also this evening, guys, uh, Lisa is going to have a free ebook for all attendees. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, if you remember, Lisa was here before. This is her encore presentation. Uh, she shared her phenomenal story of uh, returning back to work after 13 years, Lisa? 12 years, oh, pretty close. 12 years. 12 years. <laughs> um, so returning back to the workforce. Uh, if you haven't caught that, please catch this one, that one. But I am going to turn it over to Lisa right now. Lisa, thank you. I'm going to mute myself and close my camera. Okay. Welcome to empower yourself in your personal and professional life. What if you were, what if you want to learn here tonight? Sorry, what if what you want to learn here tonight? Not only set up a framework to lock into specific goals, but also gains you not one, but two of the six most in demand skills for future work. Those skills are problem solving and critical thinking. Problem solving is number five of the top 10 skills recruiters want for graduates. It's number one of the top six missing skills for job applicants. Critical thinking facilitates analyzing, questioning assumptions, testing hypotheses, observing and drawing on conclusions. Critical thinking is a habit formed to help with problem solving. Employers think critical thinking skills are 99.2% essential, but you may be surprised to learn that only 55.8% of grads are proficient in this area. Problem solving steps facilitate presenting a framework to zone in on your goals. There's seven steps included in this process. There's an executive summary, issue and issue identification, environmental and root cause analysis, alternatives and or options, recommendations and implementation, and monitor and control, and hopefully a contingency plan if possible. Problem solving includes an executive summary, which is completed at the end of the steps. It's basically an overview of your strategic thoughts while demonstrating what direction you're taking with outlines of your background and presents other um, issues. So for the purpose of our discussion tonight, I'm gonna share a little bit about how I used problem solving to get my game plan to go back to work. I won't go through each of the steps all the way through the seven steps because we'd be here for quite a while. So I'm going to just include um, a few issues along with the main issue so you can understand the thread through the problem solving process. So the executive summary would include things like your short term goals, your long term goals, um, your main issue. Like for instance, for myself, my main issue was really 
how was I going to prove my value to an employer? So some of the things I looked at when I had finished my case study, because the executive summary is done at the end, included, you know, how is it going to affect my family? What was going on in the economy? Um, what kind of mix makes sense for me? Was it part-time, full-time, job sharing? Um, you know, what kinds of hours was I looking for? Flexible? Um, you know, what kinds of trainings did I need? What about the hidden job market? At the time, it was during a recession. So all of these internal and external factors uh, definitely played into the economic uh, situation and how to drill into basically the hidden job market, which was the challenge that you have uh, when you're looking for a job and especially when you're returning to the workforce, maybe even more so. So that's a little bit about what would be included in an executive summary. So as I mentioned, um, I'm not gonna go through each of the things that I uh, went through when I did this problem solving, but the main issue was I was trying to prove my value to an employer, which is very challenging when you've been at home and you don't know where to start and how to prove that value. So I broke it down into short-term goals and long-term goals. Um, some of my short-term issues included needing to get a current reference, needing to find the hidden job market, um, needing to update and refresh or redo my software skills. Uh, for long-term, I kind of focused on putting that aside for the immediate uh, plan. What I was trying to do was just get any job um, to get back into the workforce to help fund my long-term goals, which uh, included, you know, signing up for courses to work on my designation, um, you know, getting, getting past an entry-level position so that um, I was earning the potential income to allow me to invest in, you know, designations, courses, being a member, so all those kinds of um, issues. But the main issue was really, how was I going to prove my value to a potential employer? And the environment at the time, unfortunately, was a recession. So many people were looking for jobs. Um, many people had more skills than myself. And even though um, it was a recession, there was still companies that were hiring, which is similar to what we're experiencing COVID, there are still companies doing really well who are still hiring through this time. Um, so you wanna try to stand out in that crowd of many who are applying for that position. If we go to the next step where we're looking at the environment, a few things were going on. So I was trying to zone in on my three short-term skills, um, sorry, my three short-term issues, uh, wanting to get a current reference, trying to find the hidden job market, and wondering what to do about my skill set. So those were kind of the three um, issues that I worked through throughout the problem-solving steps. So if I was looking at those issues, um, for a reference, for example, um, quantitative data would be something like 91 or percent um, of the employers wanted an employee with experience. So that could um, be difficult to deal with. So a con would be, how would you get a reference when 91% are looking for someone with experience? But um, a positive way to look at it might be you could volunteer to get that reference. So that's how I would work through that issue. Um, for another example, the hidden job market a quantitative uh, piece of data would be 70 to 80% of the jobs are in that hidden market. And so a con would be, it's really difficult to tap in and stand out. Um, and then if you were to look at it positively, well, you know, we've all done it before. If we've lost a job and gone back in, uh, we've all been in that situation. So there are positive ways to look at it. Um, for software, I was trying to uh, figure out how to either refresh, restart, or redo my courses. So a quantitative piece of data for that would be the cost uh, per course. So, 
you know, what courses I want to take and how much they're going to cost. And even a quantitative piece could be uh, the time frame that you had to spend to do that upgrading. Um, a con could be, you know, you might have to th consider other costs such as babysitting, um, you know, time traveling to go to those courses or time to take them online or time to go into a facility to take them if that was open at the time. Um, and the thing is you wanna get something that's uh, going to show value. So even if it's a certificate, uh, it's still gonna prove that you're dedicated to uh, upskilling and upgrading your skills. So that's kind of examples of what would be included in this section of the problem solving steps. Um, it should, also tie into the importance of proving your value. So those things all kind of tie into trying to prove uh, my value to an employer. If we go to some alternatives and or options, um, you can consider many things uh, from your short-term list and your long-term list. I just, for the purpose of this discussion, am focusing on short-term. So it was the reference, the hidden job market, and the software skills. So some alternatives uh, for reference, you could try to get uh, like a volunteer position. Um, that would be good to get a reference, but the con would be it might not pay or it might not pay very much. Um, and you know, I guess you have to weigh what makes sense for you at the time. Um, you have to look at your situation and also consider your family mix. Like if your kids are little, can you get a volunteer uh, position that would be during the day when they're in school and then it wouldn't be as disruptive? Um, for the hidden market, you would uh, do things like, you know, cold calls, you could do uh, targeting business areas, you could go to events, online events, um, tap into referrals. So even though, you know, all those things are challenging, you're still going to want to find a way to stand out. So something like doing a network card or um, doing um, a portfolio page on social media with like skills that you've learned during, during this time that would add value and show uh, that you're serious and it would make you stand out as someone a little different from all those applicants that are trying to do uh, the same thing that you are. So for my software skills, um, you know, some alternatives could be uh, full courses, some could be at adult learning centers, some could be free, uh, some could be self-taught. Um, the cons, of course, would be how would you prove your value, for example, um, if you self-taught yourself uh, some software. But to me, you can still prove your value. You can create a presentation, you can create uh, a timeline where you can plot your journey of your return to work on it. Um, you know, there's many different things. You can create a portfolio page with your skills or, you know, how you've mapped out your journey. I still believe that even if it's free, uh, there is a way <clears throat> to show value and you can still um, turn that into a positive thing. So I guess some of the quantitative uh, pieces would be, you know, cost to uh, go to your volunteer position if you had transportation or you needed certain clothing or maybe you needed to upgrade and get a CPR course. Um, for the hidden market, maybe the cost could be um, upgrading to a new laptop or having to buy a printer or uh, investing in some cards for yourself to do a networking card, that kind of thing. Uh, the software costs obviously uh, would be the cost of the course, um, to take the course, like uh, to sign up, maybe also babysitting costs, traveling costs, uh, materials costs. So there's lots of uh, different considerations um, to take when considering all your alternatives and or options. What I like about this section is when you draw it all out through all your different issues, uh, you can then see, sometimes you can combine things like you can do something that costs money with something that's free and you can still get a really good um, demonstration of value 
for an employer, even if it's self-taught, like uh, the examples I gave, uh, you don't have to go out and spend a lot. You can um, self-teach through manuals. There's lots of uh, free online courses. So I like the idea of combining um, options that make sense for you at that time. And even if you think about your short-term goals, you're gonna do this in the short term and it might cost you just a little bit. When you get back into the workforce, you can maybe then transfer to your long-term uh, long term ideas and long-term goals and maybe invest a little bit more in your upgrading. So I think combinations work really good um, because they allow you to do a fit within your timeline that makes sense for you and your family and what's going on uh, with your economic situation at the time. So I like this section a lot in that it really brings uh, clarity into your options, uh, what's good for you and what makes sense for you and your family uh, during this time. So recommendations um, would include supporting all of those things that we talked about, the short term, the long term, um, covering off your main issue. They would answer, you know, questions like for volunteering, like um, where would you volunteer? Well, you could do it um, possibly at a school, possibly at a youth group um, in, in better times, not now, obviously. But you may even be able to volunteer for organizations uh, virtually and help them out that way too. Um, you know, what, what are you gonna do? You're gonna help gain um, more skills and you know you can do that um, when your kids are in school or if your kids are going to going to um, do online learning. Maybe there's a bit of time in there that you can still kind of weave it into your day. I know it's challenging right now. So for um, for myself to network, um, I looked at you know local businesses. So that would be who networking events, online events, um, canvassing physical. Uh, business areas when possible. Uh, how would you do that? Well, you can talk to people, you can leave messages, you can use social media, you can attend um, virtual events and then reach out to people afterwards. Um, you know, you can do it phone, you can do it uh, email, direct message. Uh, so many, so many options now locally and uh, both internationally if, if it's something virtual that you're looking for. So for upgrading skills, you can do um, the same thing. You can do learning online, you can do self-learning, you can um, go into physical places if they're open. Um, so for myself, I, um, I wanted advanced skills. So I kind of skipped intermediate and beginning, which kind of saved me money and time. And, you know, but you can also teach yourself um, self-taught through manuals and online programs locally, at home, um, there's lots of different options out there. So I think the biggest challenges um, I faced were, you know, how are you gonna deal with negative consequences? So, um, you know, not having that budget that you want to go and get the training. So like I said, back in the alternative section, well, mix it up, do a little bit of self-taught, do a little bit of structured learning and you'll reduce your costs and your time to do the upgrading. Um, how can you protect yourself from changes? Well, you can change your plan. Um, you don't have to do both short and long-term goals all at once, like I mentioned. Maybe you do short-term for a little bit until the situation gets better or your situation changes and then you switch to your long-term um, ideas and goals and get through it that way. So there's lots of different options out there. Um, and it just presents a different way to look at things rather than just saying, oh, you know, I need training, I can't do it at all, or I need a reference, how am I going to get it? Working through these steps can show you that, you know, there's combinations that um, you can uh, move and change and use when it's uh, best for you. So um, the strategic direction will show you how to minimize your costs and maybe even reduce your time to get that training. Like for myself, it reduced uh, my costs because I looked at it and said, well, 
I'm going to do a combination of self-taught and certified um, just quick upgrading versus totally going back to school uh, for a two-year program, which would be costly. So there's always uh, trade-offs. And I like that this um, problem-solving steps allows you to combine what works for you and helps you uh, get through you know, your short-term goals and your long-term goals. So it can be carried out um, and changed as you need it to. And you can carry it out without further study or if you decide um, <clears throat> to put something off for long-term skills, you can come back and visit it again. So a good way to monitor if you're on track, you can, um, excuse me for a second, you can make a budget where you can break it down into short term and long term. You can have a meeting with friends and just help each other stay on track. You can review all the steps through and make changes. You can monitor and adjust as you go along, which is kind of nice. And if possible, you can even throw in um, a contingency plan. So maybe, maybe what your plan is, is to just do a little bit and then say, for instance, if your kids are in school, wait till they're um, back in school full time. Maybe you need to put it off till then. Um, you know, there's different ways to have a contingency plan in place to help you get through um, what makes sense for you. So I hope that, um, these steps help you get a better idea of alternatives and how to make combinations work for you and what works out best uh, for your time. <coughs> Excuse me. So it should be um, done through a strategic analysis, which we did. It should kind of all have a thread that flows through and it should be logical and structured, include a little bit of quantitative data. And that should give you a really strong analysis to help you move forward. You can use this for business or personal, um, like the examples that I was using today. You can tweak it, you can uh, go back to it. It's very flexible. So I hope uh, that it helps you along your journey. And I hope that it helps you have a different view on problem solving and critical thinking. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining me. I appreciate the opportunity to come back to that. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, here I go. Better fingers here. Thank <laughs> you, Lisa. <laughs> I, ha I have a couple questions for you. Um, so, one, how old were your, were your boys when you went back to work? Uh, the youngest was just going into grade one. So, oh, okay. yeah. So like six. Yeah, I have three boys. Yeah. And the oldest was? <laughs> he was grade seven. So, so maybe 13, 12, yeah, 13. Yeah, 12, 13. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, piggybacking on that question is, um, how are you able to schedule your house goal responsibilities and be productive with the three boys? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, when I first got back to work, you mean, or like when I was trying when to do you this? Were doing this, yeah, when you were doing this. Yeah, so I was uh, fortunate I had my father-in-law. Um, I volunteered during the day when the boys were in school mm. and that's when I had a, just a lunch hour volunteer position to get that reference. So it didn't disrupt their schedule too much. Mm. Um, when I went back and did the quick training for the software, it was only a one week course. So my father-in-law jumped in for a week and just watched them mm. um, just to help out. But I was, I was fortunate to have that opportunity. A lot of people um, may not have that resource available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you, Lisa. How did you adjust to going back to work as far as feeling physically energetic? Yeah, that's so different, right? Now you have to be. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, so I think it kind of helped doing that volunteer um, time before, because mm -hmm. it kind of got me in a routine where I would, you know, take the boys to school, then I would exercise, then I would go do my lunch hour duty, then I would come back, do errands, pick the boys up, mm -hmm. make supper, <laughs> get them to their activities. So it was, um, it was a good exercise for juggling how it was going to be, you know, so, not yeah. totally, but Mm -hmm. You know, it was a good introduction to trying to juggle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the how old are your children now, Lisa? They're big guys. We've now. got yeah, we've got 23, 19, and 17. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, they're big guys now. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else, guys? Drop it in the chat. If not, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead to my first question. You know, I only have two because this is Lisa's encore, so I don't ask the first question again. So I have two questions today, Lisa. Um, and between the questions, I'll check back in the chat. So considering what we, um, considering today's topic, empowering yourself, right? Uh, is there something that you would tell your younger self about empowering yourself if you could go back and tap a younger Lisa on the shoulder? Yeah, I think, you know, even if, like I was saying, I was trying to prove my value. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us don't think we have value. Mm -hmm. But like I mentioned, you can demonstrate value um, easily. And it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Like you can, you know, self teach yourself a program. And, you know, do a document, do a presentation up print it out, um, do a timeline, you know, you can take those things into an interview and you'd be surprised how, how much that will set you apart. Yeah. All right. I'm going to check the chat guys and really quickly, of course I lost the chat. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, do you exercise or take a portion of your day to be alone? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I do actually. I, um, I replaced my commute with a morning walk. Ah. Uh, so I walk every morning about quarter after six, mm -hmm. just before I go to work, like, I, cause I'm working from home. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I do try to walk after supper, but it's not every day that I do mm -hmm. that, but I do try to walk twice a day. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, to, well, you know, my commute, <laughs> my commute was four <laughs> minutes was, was literally six minutes so <laughs> if I replace my commute with a walk I'll be doing myself a disservice if that was my only walk right <laughs> um, yes Rhonda says love that replacing your commute with a walk she also says thank you for coming back Lisa so you're welcome <laughs> Hi, ah, yes. Thank you again, Lisa, for coming back. Uh, I I love your story. There are some other folks in the group who love your story. Um, and I not only do I love your story, I love the fact that uh, you are helping other women now, you know, um, <clears throat> do the same thing. And I just love that. I think that um, you probably picked up some stuff that you wouldn't pick up, you wouldn't have learned if you didn't go through that journey. Right. And so you're going to, you're helping so many women because you know that and they need to know it, you know? Um, Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah, guys. It's hard. I mean, it's not easy, right? You don't have a point of reference when you're just by yourself. So it's kind of nice if you can use like this problem solving template to just work through and, and try to, you know, put something on paper that just makes you feel a little bit more comfortable yeah. about how you're going to go about your journey. Yeah. yeah. And I think so, oftentimes when we are self-reflective, it's negative things, right? And so we're not, we're not just by nature. I don't know if it's by nature or just society, just we, we don't just like go through and say, okay, what do I do well? How do I do that well? Right? Like we just don't, you're like, oh, you messed up on that. You messed up on that. You could have done, but like that is the, you know, that's the natural way that our mind goes. Instead of like being really reflective about what can I do? What have I done? You know, what people can actually help me demonstrate that? What projects can help me demonstrate? Like we just don't naturally do that. 
So having this framework is, I think, is valuable. It's really valuable. Um, I think so. Uh, let's see if we have anything else. Okay, no. So um, guys, I'm gonna go ahead with my last question. Uh, and so my final question, Lisa, is if we had one takeaway for today, and it could be something you've already said. So it doesn't, you know, it could be, it could be what you just said. Um, but if we only could walk away with one thing, what would you want us to walk away with? I think it's, it's back to the value. I think if you, you know, if you try to know what your skill set is, mm -hmm. and you try to do some research and find out what that value is worth in the market mm -hmm. and then have that in your mind because even if you're you know laid off or you've had a gap you're still worth what you're worth and I think mm -hmm. we don't push for what we're worth enough we kind of settle for less mm -hmm. and we're still valuable even if you've had you know time off you still have skills that you've gained during that time off doesn't matter it's still and I don't think that we give ourselves enough credit yeah I agree. I don't think that we give ourselves some credit. Again, it goes back to that. We are just, for whatever reason, our brain is just the bad, right? Or, or the, oh, that, yeah, I did that, but that's nothing. You know, like we don't want to pat ourselves on the back, even internally to say, oh, that's a great thing. I need to highlight that to someone, right? Uh, unless someone is really prodding us and asking us, you know, um, so yeah. All right, guys, I appreciate all of you for coming out this evening. Thank you, Lisa. I did not have a live this um, this week, um, but let me say thank you again, Lisa. You know, I really appreciate you. Um, oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I really, really yeah. do appreciate you. Um, and, and talking to you tonight before this live started reminded me that I need to start flexing my LinkedIn muscle some more <laughs> because I was reading someone else's post that you commented to. OK, you commented that made me then click your profile and read all about you. And that's why you're here. And I have not been giving myself that LinkedIn time because I've been so wrapped up in all the other stuff. But that LinkedIn time is so important and I need to, to jump into it. So I'm 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 glad that that job that you being here tonight made me um, remember that I need to do that so I can get more oh, stars like you. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. And if anybody wants the ebook, um, please reach out to me either on LinkedIn or through Facebook or through Danette. I'd be happy to share. Um, it's a PDF file, so it's easy. I can just email it to you if you need it. And yeah, I'm hoping it will help somebody, uh, you know, build a framework that works for them. I'm sure it will. All right, Lisa, <laughs> thank you. You know, I appreciate you. You're welcome to come back whenever thank you'd you. like. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.